Hmm, I'm just deciding which of my paperback books to rip up to make some decor this autumn season. I am slightly nervous though. Would you rip up a book to get crafting with? But I'm on a one woman mission to eradicate orange pumpkins from my house this autumn. So I'm thinking up inventive ways of bringing autumn into my home without going down that orange pumpkin route. To me, orange pumpkins say Halloween and not the whole of the fabulous autumn season. If you can bear destroying a paperback book, you're going to love this video. A few cuts and you can end up with a book pumpkin. And look, I've sprayed it orange. I was trying to get away from that particular colour, but it just keeps following me around. Do watch on to the end of the video because I'll show you how to make another pumpkin. And I sprayed that one with black spray paint and used a cork to make the stalk. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Julie from Julie Davis Flower Workshops and Flower Start, the online flower arranging classes. Here on my channel, I make a variety of videos, mainly with a flower arranging theme. I am, after all, the florist that teaches. And also I throw in a few DIYs as well for those times when you want to get creative, but you can't get hold of any fresh flowers. I hope you enjoy the video and do let me know in the comments whether you could face ripping up your books. I had to steal my nerves for this bit of the project because I don't know how you feel about um, ruining a paperback book that just feels so counterintuitive. But you'll see me here getting to grips with the project and ripping off the front cover and taking off the section of the spine as well. And when you get to it, it really is quite easy to do. I'm just going to use half the pumpkin as the template. You don't need to cut out the full pumpkin. So you'll see me going around here and then I'm going to cut back down the fold line and I will place that template next to the edge of the book and trace around it and cut it out. And when you've cut out your template, you need to line up the straight edge with the spine of the book. Now you can see here that the fl flat bottom of my pumpkin is sitting up a bit higher than the bottom of the page and I want my pumpkin to be a bit bigger so I'm using the template as a guide but I'm doing a pencil line to draw a slightly bigger pumpkin and that way I can adjust the size according to the how big the pages are in my book and then you need to get cutting. I've started off here cutting about three or four pages at once. This bit takes quite a while to do and is quite laborious. And my top tip is just make sure that as you cut each page, you're not making the pumpkin bigger and bigger. So you will need to go back and just make sure you really are trimming them all to size. So I didn't do a page at a time. I picked up as many as I could cut with my scissors. So my scissors are quite robust and they were probably taking about six or eight pages each time. This tricky bit at the top where the stem of the pumpkin was, but I guess you could cut it out separately if you wanted to. Just go nice and round and then use your scissors from the top end to cut down. Every so often I did flick the pages, the cut pages of the book over. So I just gave myself one, the last page to act as the template, just so it wasn't getting too bulky. So as you can see here, it's a bit like watching paint dry. So I'm going to speed the film up because you can see exactly what I'm doing now. From memory, my book had about 485 pages in it. I did a second book, which I'll show you later on in the video, and that had 390 pages in, and actually the smaller book worked out slightly better. I found that the thicker the book, naturally the wider the spine, and it was harder to get the book to curl round in a nice tight circle, so I did end up with a few gaps. I then took my book outside and I've decided to spray this pumpkin orange just on the outer edges. So I didn't want to get my table dirty, so I have covered it with a cloth and then put my hand under the cloth so I don't spray my hand orange. And I do a quick test spray just so I can gauge how quickly the paint's coming out of the can and give it um, a light coat. Just a squirt, 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 rather than doing one long, heavy, drippy coat of paint. And when the paint is dry, I start to fan out the 
pages. So you can see here is just the lightest touch of orange on the edge, but mainly the pumpkin is going to look black and white. So I then turn the book over and I'm putting a pencil into the back of the spine and moulding the pumpkin around the pencil. And this is the bit that I found quite tricky because I ended up with, instead of a total round core to my pumpkin, mine was a bit angled and therefore the pages splayed out unevenly. And then to fix it together, I'm using a glue stick on both of the end pages and I'll curl them round together and then pin them in place using some wooden clothes pegs. The glue stick glue doesn't take very long to dry, probably 10 or 15 minutes. So the moment of truth is to remove the pegs and take out the pencil that you've wrapped the whole pumpkin around and hopefully everything will be fastened together and then the pages will naturally flow out. As I said before, my inner core wasn't totally circular, so I do end up with a few gaps, but I think when you look at the pumpkin on the side, it just adds to the lovely homemade detail of this paper crafted work of art. For my second pumpkin, I've decided that I want to use an old wine cork to make the stem of my pumpkin. So I've done exactly the same thing and I've cut out my pages using my template. And um, I then cut a notch into the book. So instead of cutting their stem up and out as I did with the first pumpkin, I am just going through and cutting down and across and making a little trough that the cork stalk can stand up in. And again, I'm working with a few pages at a time. And once I've cut out the notch, I then flick the pages out of the way, but keep one page back so I can follow the template. And hopefully that way that my little indentation will be the equal distance and equal size all the way around. You'll find you only need to make two cuts to create each notch, once down the page and then back to the spine and then you can just peel off the pages away from the gluey spine edge. Again, this only takes three or four minutes probably to cut your way all the way through the book and as you see here when I fan it all out and put the end pages together you can see that little indentation which is the perfect size for adding in the cork stalk and if you didn't have a cork to hand you could use a piece of twig or branch from the garden. I'm then taking my pumpkin back out into the garden and I've got some black paint to spray the edges with. And when your paint is dry, you can put your pumpkin together. Now I've decided for this pumpkin that I don't want to permanently glue it together. I quite like the idea of clipping it together with paper clips so that I can have it up for the autumn season. And then at the end of autumn, I can pack it away flat and store it and bring it out again next year. You see me wrapping the book, the pumpkin around my pencil and because the book is slightly shorter, 380 odd pages, just made a tighter circle around the pencil and the pages have fanned out in a much more even pattern. I couldn't find two matching paper clips. So I've got a black one at the top and a red one at the bottom. So I just need to make sure that when I display it, that I put the fixings against the wall so they can't be seen. And for the same reason, I'm just placing my cork inside the pumpkin. I'm not gluing it in place because I want to be able to dismantle it at the end of the autumn, but you could glue it in place if you wanted a more permanent fix. And here are my finished pumpkins side by side. Which one do you prefer, the orange one or the one with the cork stalk? You'll have to let me know in the comments. That's all for now and I'll see you next time.